Hi beekeepers, Jim Two here on for me what is February the 9th. Ironically, I'm cutting this for my article for April Bee Culture magazine. So I'm telling you the truth. It's cold outside right now where I am. A uh, foot and a half, two feet of snow in some places. 16, 17 degrees. That's hard on my camera equipment. It's real hard on me. And it affects the quality of my enthusiasm for making these little videos. So there's the truth. This was still left out from last month. So I'm using it again. Because of this restrictiveness of the pandemic that we've all been living through. And because of the weather, I've been indoors a lot. So while being indoors, I reviewed, as I told you I would in previous articles, some of the historical artifacts that remain in the bee catalogs and in our language in beekeeping. Why, why is that? So I went into what some could describe as nauseating detail in the article about why we super our bees. Specifically, I started right off on that because I suspect that many of you have, I have, had to try to explain why we use such an odd word in that way. Everybody else superimposes, super fine, super deal, but super not being used as a noun, especially a box on a beehive. So I went into great detail to explain how we did that. And essentially, what it appears to me is that we're using an archaic definition, 1600s, 1700s, when, that, when super actually meant something above, something beyond, something extra. And it was used in that capacity. We began to use it at that time. In the earliest days, when you put a box on a beehive, it was called storying. I don't know when that changed to supering, but there you go. So instead of superimposing a box on top of our hive, we super the hive. And we leave it like that. But it's important that you know that during our 9,000 years that humans and bees have had some kind of uncomfortable relationship together, we've definitely tried other things. So in my model hive that I have here before you, with two deeps, so if I wanted to super it, you know the drill. You come out, you make the decision, and then you add the super as you want. Now, I didn't go into this in the article. You can top super, or you can bottom super. There are those who firmly believe that bees don't like crossing open space, and to put the fuller box up top, will encourage them to fill the bottom box more quickly. I think the bees are going to do what they can do no matter where you put the box. But that would be top supering and this would be bottom supering. So we're putting our bees on the top. What I spent a lot of time discussing in the article is that while we were learning to story our hives, we didn't know for sure since this box contraption since the skeps that our British friends were using were all novel and new to bees and beekeepers still, we were learning our way along. So one of the things that we tried, of course, was supering from the bottom. So instead of adding the hive up top, we would add it at the bottom. I should say, since we're not adding the super up top. We're adding it on the bottom. It's called nadering. I made the comment that some of the people using warrior hives still nadir. They, they give space from the bottom, not from the top. So my quote super beehive then looks like this with the extra space on the bottom when it's been nadered. Now, the thing about nadering is what they meant to happen. They meant for to have a wide hole in the inner cover. You would put that on there, and then you would put the full brood nest on top of the empty box. 
What would happen then, the bees would hang through that hole into the nadir, build new comb down there, and move the brood nest down below, and then fill this box with honey that I, the beekeeper, would then come along and take off, not totally unlike a super, because what was the nadir space is now the bee nest. Nadering. Now, if you wanted to eek the hive and just add more space to it, no winter cover, no crown board, as it's called in the old literature. So the difference apparently between an eek and a nadir is the crown board, and then that would leave space for the bees to do whatever they wanted. Piece of equipment that I shouldn't even bring up now, a bottom hive ventilator, is a type of eking. Eking is the same word we use when you eke out a living. So you can eke the brood nest, add a rim along the bottom, and that would be called eking. Now, there's one big one that's left after we tried nadering and eking, every, all of those happening from the bottom. There was a different, totally different school of thought going on, and that was the, de the design and the use of collateral hives. Now, this is going to take me a minute to set it up, so I'm going to break away. Give me a second, and I'll come right back to you with this hive redesigned for the possibility of turning it into a collateral hive. Okay, I'm back. What do you think? There's a central unit. A guy named Thomas Nutt went to great extremes to design and contemplate these things. Others. I just quickly mentioned in the article, also pursued this. You add space from the sides. In a strange way, this is like some of the long hives that some modern day beekeepers are interested in today, where you add bees and add space from the side to make the hive long, not high. So we've tried this over and over again. It works, it doesn't work. So this is a collateral hive. There's an entrance between this box, it's not a super, and this box through the wall that allows the bees to go back and forth inside. So as you add space, you add one on one side, the bees fill that with brood and honey. As you need more space, you add this on the other side and you never have to be taking off these boxes from top to bottom. So these collateral hives were supposed to have a lot of potential for controlling swarming. Uh, they made a strong claim to that and nadering. Was supposed, to, was supposed to suppress swarming, which was a big deal. They wanted swarm, but they wanted to control them all those years ago. So this is the collateral hive design. The point I tried to make in the article was that we were learning to super at the same time that we were trying to learn to nadir or to eek, which is a type of nadering, or even adding them to the side, which was called collateral hives, to add space as from the side as we needed it. So all of that to say that when you go out now and super your bees, I hope it has kind of a meaning that it's an old, old concept that we beekeepers are using as though it's just an everyday regular thing. I spent some more of the article discussing why medium brood foundation. Those who kept these for a long time know that medium, uh, medium brood foundation is as common as dirt. Well, that's simply because the heavy brood and the light brood foundation are no longer made. Only medium brood and thin surplus. So you read it in the catalog, medium brood foundation, like it's for a medium hive box? No. Like you're going to raise medium sized bees? No. It's just what's left from the inventory of hive foundation weights that used to be. Division board feeders, why is it a division board feeder? I discussed the fact that there used to actually be a division board. It was always homemade, but you used the division board to petition the colony as you wanted to, to control cavity space inside the brood nest. That's not to be confused with the follower board which is available today as a thin version of a division board. Someone, I don't know who, left the division board hollow and then began to use it for a feeder. So today we have a division board feeder, but the division board is gone. 
Tempest in a teapot. Snow weather. Not much to do. Old literature. Trying to understand why we do what we do. These are just some of the terms I had a look at. Hope you read it. I had a good time writing it. Kept me entertained on some dark snowy days. Jim 2. Thank you. Bye-bye.